Hey everyone, my name is Jenny Men. I'm a solutions architect. If you want to learn how to create a Zoom app, you are at the right place. Also check out my other tutorial on this topic, which was what got this channel started. It was a video I made a while back and then I never looked at it again. Then a couple months after I made it, I went and looked and realized I had like 7,000 views without doing any marketing and just letting it sit there. That's when I realized I could start a YouTube channel like this. Anyway, here's my second video for the Zoom developer like you. Today, I'd like to talk about how you can create a Zoom app on our marketplace right now. So if you take a look at my screen, you can see I've already navigated to marketplace.zoom.us and immediately we can see some information about what Zoom apps are, as well as some apps that we can install right now. We're going to focus on creating our own app today, so make sure that you're logged in with an account that has access to create applications on the Zoom Marketplace. What this means is if you're an admin, you should be all good to go. But if you're a user, then you'll want to speak with your admin and make sure that you have the proper permissions added to your role. Let's click Build App under the Developer dropdown on the right hand side and we'll see a page where we can create a few different types of apps. We're going to focus on Zoom apps today, the very first one. So click Create there to see the dialog here. We're going to name our app, and this is what's going to be used when we publish to the Zoom Marketplace if we choose to do so. And it can't be changed going forward, so make sure that you pick an app or a name that makes sense for your app. We only have user managed app types right now, which means that each user installs and authorizes the app individually. So nothing to select there. And finally, we have our distribution checkbox. Leave this checked if you want to publish your app to the Zoom Marketplace. But for today's purpose, we'll go ahead and leave that unchecked. Once our app is created, we can see we have our credentials page here, with the first item being the home URL. This is important because this is the URL that Zoom will open first when your app is launched. If you're using one of our reference apps, this would be your NROC URL. And in this case, that's what I'm going to use here too. So we can see right there, just the base URL is the home page for us. We have some options for OAuth authentication. This is how your app is installed and authorized for users. So you can see the client ID, the client secret, those are essentially the username and password for your app. And then we have the redirect URL. And that's where Zoom will redirect you once a user has authorized your app in order to provide you with the access token. So we'll paste that in there. We're using, as you can see, the same domain as our homepage, but with slash auth. If you're using one of our reference apps, then this is the format that you want to use. But if you're creating your own app, then make sure you're tailoring this URL to what you set up in your app. So I want to tell Zoom that this is indeed the URL we want to use for OAuth by allowing it in the OAuth allow list. And we'll also want to confirm that the Zoom client can connect to this domain. Great. So the app credentials page is filled out. Let's go ahead and move on to information. On the information tab, this is all details that are specific to you and your app that you're creating. As a bare minimum, we want to make sure that we have the short description and our long description. Also make sure that you're adding in a developer name and a developer email. Great. Click continue, and now we can see our features page. This is where you can enable all the different functions and capabilities of Zoom apps, either through the SDK, APIs, or through our standard webhook features that we offer with our other OAuth applications. For the cases of setting up our basic reference app, all we would need to do is select the share app permission, click done, so that's all we need to do here. As you can see, there's a lot more to do, including enabling collaborate mode or guest mode, depending on the use case of your app. 
Moving on to the scopes tab here, we can see the Zoom app in meeting scope has already been added for us. But if you wanted to extend the capabilities of our application, we would first add the APIs and scopes that we needed right here. And this would be for calling the Zoom API with your Zoom app OAuth token. There we are. Now we can click add to install our app here, or we can move over to the app credentials page and copy this client ID and client secret over to one of our reference applications. That's it. In this next part of the video, we're going to go over how you can quickly get set up with our basic reference Zoom app. To follow along with this guide, make sure that you have four things. First, download a source code from our GitHub repo and make sure you've opened it in your IDE. Next, install NROC as well as Node.js and NPM. Uh, and finally, make sure that you have an app configured within our Zoom Marketplace, which is what we just did in the first part of this video. So if you have all those things, then you're ready to continue and let's go ahead and open up our IDE. So the first thing we'll do here is start an NROC tunnel on port 3000. This will allow us to have an HTTPS URL to use for our Zoom app. We'll navigate back here and we'll set the home URL as that index page right there. Then we'll move on to the redirect URL for OAuth and we'll use the same NROC domain. But we want to append the slash auth route to it. Make sure there's no spaces ahead or after. Great. Then we want to tell Zoom that we really do want to use this for our OAuth redirect URL by adding it to the allow list. Finally, let's add the base domain for our MRAC URL into this domain allow list. And that's everything we need to do for the app credentials page. Now to the features tab, because this is a basic reference app, we don't have too many features to add. Just click Add APIs under the Zoom App SDK section. We're looking for the Share App permission. We'll make sure that's selected and we're ready to continue. Let's go back to our IDE and open up a new terminal window. Here we're going to install our NPM dependencies. Because I've already installed them, it went pretty quickly here. We can see right here that it sets up Husky for pre-commit checks and also generates the session secret for us. Along with that, if we look at our files, we now have an ENV file that's been created where you can see there's a field for our client ID, client secret, and redirect URL. Let's grab those from our Zoom app in the marketplace and fill out this .env file. We go back to the app credentials page, we can copy the client ID and we can paste it within the ZM client ID field. And we'll do the same thing with our client secret. And uh, redirect URL. So that's it. That's all the setup we need to get started with this app. Now we can use npm run dev in our terminal window to start up a development server. You see that it gives us a local host domain, which is where our server is running, but we'll actually want to use the HTTPS URL from our MROC server. So we'll go ahead and copy that and we'll paste this right into our browser so that we can see our Zoom app running in the browser. Because we're using MROC we get this warning, but we can just go ahead and click visit the unsaved site right now to get around that. Now we have our Zoom app running in our browser, but really what we want is to get it running in Zoom. So we'll click install and it will install the app for us. And that's pretty much it. Remember to check out my other most popular Zoom app video that got this channel started. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to this channel for upcoming content on how to start or build a career in tech, how to automate using low-code RPA, how to build real-time low-code data pipelines, and other tech content.